I've received the scriptures. I read them. Okay, but let me I respond understand. to some of the points That's you've raised. You, I think you've raised a lot of points that I need to no, obviously I respond not. to. I'm just trying to, it's my best as I can. No, I understand. I, I accept that. I accept that. But first of all, Jesus did not say, all right, I was first sent to the, to, to the Jews, then I was sent to the Gentiles. He I'm never said that. No, hold on one second. I allowed, I, I did listen. I was very attentive to the words that you said. Jesus did not say at any point during his ministry that I was first sent to the Jewish people and then my ministry was to the wider world. He didn't say that. He said in Matthew chapter 15 verse 24, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And I, and I, and I read to you out a verse in Matthew chapter 10 verse 5 where Jesus said, do not go in, in unto the way of the Gentiles, rather go in unto the lordship of the house of Israel. So that was a commandment from Jesus himself. I feel that I'm being more Christian than you. I'm being more... I feel that I'm being more... I think we should ignore this. I think we should ignore this. I feel that I am being more biblically compliant, more than yourself, because Jesus clearly said I was sent to the Jewish people. He never said I was sent to the world. You are bringing verses that are, are not compliant to the verses that I'm bringing. At best, they just contradict each other. So this is, this is what I have to say. I think you should ignore that, honestly. It's just not, it's not beneficial to any of us. So what I'm saying to you, right, is that I also raised to you about a point where Jesus said, we worship what we know, you worship what you don't know, that salvation lies with the Jews, right? We can see here from this verse that Jesus worshiped God. Now surely, my friend, if Jesus is God Almighty, and I want, I, I want to gauge your, your understanding to this, if Jesus is God himself, then why was Jesus making an admission that he worships God himself. He said, we worship what we know. You worship what you don't know. For salvation lies with the Jews. So Jesus knew he, who his God was. He knew who his Lord was. So how can God worship God? It just makes no sense. You need to bring up something which is more established, more concrete, or give me a verse where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. Give me something more concrete, something that's more robust, something that is clear cut. What you're giving me is something ambiguous, something that's open up to various interpretations. Give me something more concrete. Uh, Amza, I think your problem is, first of all, the last point that you raised, you are, you are, you are an intellect, intellectual person, you can't even make that statement. Any, anyone who made that statement was a silly man. Adma Didad who made that claim, tell me where Jesus is uh, said, I'm God worship me. Yeah. It's just a silly. Any human being with a reason cannot make that. Why? That, that, that Why point. not? Because, okay, right. I say, I'm God, worship me. I'm a, does that make me God? But then I would know your. Listen, if Jesus said. No, no, I'm just saying. No, no, I'm responding. No, 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 I'm no, responding no, no, to you. No, no, no. I'm responding. I'm asking you a question. Okay. A simple statement you yeah. want. Show me in the Bible where Jesus said, I'm God worship. Do you know why it's important? No, no, it's not. It's not. You cannot. It's a, it's a, no, it's a fallacy in the sense that a human, a human person in the flesh, for just making a statement, does not, cannot make him God unless he does things that only God can do. But that's what exactly God did, Jesus did. Let me show you. Jesus, wait, uh, what did Jesus did to prove that he was God? Okay. We have the book of uh, in, in, in in some in some uh, some some one forty eight, yeah. What's it say? Some some one forty eight, verse eight, yeah. One hundred forty eight. It says, "The Lord opened the eyes of the blind. The Lord raised those who bow down. The Lord love uh, and the Lord love the righteous." So here so in this prophecy. Jesus opened the eyes of the blind. Only God can open the eyes of the blind. So this, when he was, when he performed this miracle, when he opened this uh, blind, man was born blind, 
uh, was born blind, when he went to the Pharisees, the Pharisees even wondered, only God can open. Yeah, were you born blind? Yes. It's the parents they testify. But only God, they were astonished, only God could open the hearts of the blind. Yeah. Jesus specifically made this miracle, performed this miracle to prove he was God. That's how he proved by, he was God. I'm going to show you. He opened the eyes of this blind man. Okay. This okay. was a prophecy in the Old Testament, and okay. Jesus fulfilled it. Now, let's read in the book of Job now. In Job, in book of Job, 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 uh, uh, the book of, uh, now in the book of Job 9. I'm listening. Oh, no, I'm listening. Job 9. It says, He alone spread out the heavens and tread on water of the sea. Yeah. Who tread on the water of the sea? God. Jesus, the reason why he walked on water, he was proving again this this verse, this this prophecy. Yeah. God can walk on water. He proved to Israel that he was that God who walked on water. That's the reason why the prophecy walked on water. Yeah. yeah. There are many, many, many verses again. He fulfilled all the miracles of the prophecies that was foretold. So, yeah. first of all, this is to show you that Jesus, he could not make that statement, I'm God, worship me, man being in the flesh. But he did what only God could do to prove he was God. Okay. So now, I will show you where Jesus said, yeah, I'll show you in Matthew. I'll let you find it and then we'll, yeah. I'll respond to your question. Yeah. Conversation with the devil, what that Jesus said in you verse 5. It says, But you know, you know the, the temptation of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read it to me. But then he answered and said to him, but the devil came, he says, Look, and then take a note what he said. What because say? you, as a Muslim, trying to deny the divinity of Christ. Okay. First yeah. of all. And I'll read just from verse 1. Okay, read it, read it. And then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, which you deny, but you are quoting this verse, I hope you'll be, you be consistent to accept okay, this statement. Okay, read, read, read. Yeah? Uh, and then say, um, uh, if you are the son of God, command, command that this stone become bread. But he answered and said, it is written, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. All right? Yeah. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, he's still insisting he's the son of God. Yeah. Yeah? If you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, it's quoting in the book of uh, Psalm 91. Yeah. He shall give his angel charge over you, and in the hand they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Yeah. So here Jesus is claiming, is recognizing, is recognizing that he is the Son of God. First of all, that's the one you have to take first, because the Son of God has the ability to perform miracle, to transform the bread, to, the stone to become a bread. Okay. And, no, no. I'm, I'm let me let me respond I'm because finished. you're making a lot of points. No, no, I want to respond. Just to one point. I'm okay. Making. Go ahead. Go just ahead. one point. I'm making. Go I'm ahead. just answering. 
have re Go ahead. No so problem. here, the devil recognizes his divinity, all right? And he recognizes uh, how his does the devil recognize his divinity? His ability to do to do, uh, to do what God can do as being the Son of God, because we believe. Like the, what? Give me an example from that verse that the devil to transform the bre the stone to become a bread. Right. Right. He so call him first a son of God. If you are the son of God, do this. Right. All right. Now Jesus said. That, hold on one second. Jesus said. In John chapter 5, verse 13. No, 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 no. Let no, 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 no. Hold on one second because no, no, you're please, making a lot no, of points. No. Don't go outside of this verse. I haven't. You used earlier. Wait, wait one all, second. All, you... No, no. Don't go elsewhere. Oh. Let's stick in this verse. You need to let me finish the you point will, I'm making. Yeah, I will let you. But I'm saying to you, I'm using this point as you use vehemently uh, uh, the verse uh, the, um, Matthew 10, 5 to prove that Jesus was only sent to the lordship of Israel. Yeah, but he, and, he says, that's and what I'm he says. proving you, I'm answering you, yes. I'm answering, and I've, I've answered that, I gave you the right context, what was it, why it was not, okay. why it did not go to the other nations. Let me respond so to what I'm you're saying. I'm finishing here, okay, right, I'm on, just finishing. On. So here in this statement, yeah. the devil addressing him is to be the son of God, right. just as Christ claimed to be the son of God to Israel, yeah? And here, the devil, he wanted him to do what only the Son of God, God can do. And Jesus at the end, he says, it's written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So Jesus here, he was claiming it was God that he cannot tempt him. Right. So let me, let me, let, let me, let me respond to some of the points you made. But there you are many points I've Hold on, my friend, wait. Give me no, a I'm chance. I'm just saying. Let me, let no, I'm me, just let saying, me, let I'm me. I'm just saying there are other points I've not addressed. I know, I know. But let me, let me respond to some of the points you made. You're making a lot of points. No, and no, I need to address, I need to address some of the points you've made. I just proved right, that you divinity said, of Christ. You said, well, I don't think there's any proof of divinity and I'll tell you why. Okay. Right. You said that you pointed to book of Psalms where, um, that it was a prophesied that Jesus would heal the blind, right? But what you what you fail to realize here is that Jesus said in John chapter five, verse 30, he said, I can of myself do nothing, right? I can of myself do nothing. I judge as I hear, but my judgment is honest because I'm not seeking my will, but I am seeking the one who sent me, right? Exactly, that's actually refuting you. Right? No, it's nothing and I tell it's you, a, no, hold on one second. Point. Hold on, let me finish. My let point. me finish. I, I, I did allow you to say your point and I did not interrupt you. So let me finish. Right. What I'm saying to you, right, is that Jesus said, I can of myself do nothing. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? That says that Jesus cannot do anything of, on his own volition. Right. Number two, right, is that. In James chapter 1 verse 13, it said the Lord cannot be tempted with evil. But here we see that Jesus was tempted by the devil. So that clearly refutes that Jesus is God. Because how can God be tempted by evil? The very, the very fact that the devil even made an approach to Jesus, and which you claim that is God, demonstrates Remember, he, he, he tried to get Jesus to jump from the mountain, did he not? I'm asking you a question. Yeah. Is that not trying to tempt Jesus with evil? If I told you, go and jump off the mountain, right? Is that not something evil that I'm telling you to do? Of course. So if Jesus, right, was tempted by Satan, by Satan instructing Jesus to jump off the mountain, and then in James chapter 1 verse 13, it said the Lord cannot be tempted with evil. That clearly demonstrates that Jesus cannot be God. Full stop. Full okay. No, 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 let me finish. That? Can I no, 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 hold you on. just call me. I need to, no, hold on, I need to finish. I was patient and I listened to you very Just in short, that's why Jesus hold answered on. him, you cannot tempt the hold Lord. On. Wait, hold, hold on, wait, hold on one second. Written, you cannot tempt the Lord. Hold on one second, but you see. That's why you answered that. Well, right, That's right. an answer to the devil. Well, hold on one second. So I am aware of the response. Yeah. I'm aware of the response, but you believe. The devil tried to tempt him. Do you, Right. Can God, and Jesus quotes him, right. it's written, you cannot tempt the Lord your God. God. Can, no, my question to you, can God be tempted with evil? Yes or no? But that, what, that's what the enemy was trying to do. No, 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 no. But Jesus has to bring no, him no, in no, his no, place. No, 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 no. He says, I'm asking it you, is written. I'm it asking is you, written. Listen to the question. 
But can, it's clear. The answer is clear. Listen to the question I'm asking. <laughs> can God be tempted with evil? Yes or no? That's why Jesus answered. He was trying to tempt him. But Jesus that enforced the law. It's written, you cannot tempt your Lord, your God. Right. I don't know what you don't grasp. No. I don't know what you're not grasping. No, I tell, you're not I'll grasping. tell you why. I tell because, you why. No, because, hold look, on one he second. Tried. One second. Look, one he second. Tried. It's I, like, look, no, look, no, 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 hold on. No, 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 no. You're being unfair. You're being I'm unfair. Being unfair. Because no, I was, I was you. attentive. I was attentive to every word and point you made. No. So I am now, re I am responding to the points. I, I can see you're not liking it. No, so, I, no, so what I'm saying. No, I'm trying to bring you in order because you're out of right. order. If the devil said to Jesus, which he did do, by telling Jesus, jump off the mountain is that not evil is that not an evil attempt yeah you, you try right right what did no, look, hold on look, one look, second look, wait look. hold on in james chapter 1 verse 13 it says right no one should say god is tempted god tempted me for god cannot be tempted by evil nor does nor does he tempt anyone he was speaking james right? was speaking to who? now look James, no, 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 let look, me finish. Look, look. Allow no, me to I need finish. To ask you a question. I need to ask this question. Ask the question. Is the, is the statement where uh, um, we where, where addressed to who? To the people? It doesn't matter. Look, look. no, 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 no. It doesn't matter. No, no, no. You, you are mixed. James is making no, a, a, a no, generic no, 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 no. statement. He's look, saying look. God cannot be tempted look. by evil. No, your and we saw that look. Jesus was tempted no, no, by no, the no, devil. No, 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 no. Your Please problem, close. you are making, you are trying to assert a statement that came after when Jesus has fulfilled all his mission. And this statement, look, this statement James was making, he was using to teach the people that the conduct of the people, it should not be them to do evil, tempting evil no, no, no. against God. The verse look, doesn't say that. No, look, no, no, look, you're not. Look, no. look, look. I'm going to stop you let when you're me, saying something. Let me not... finish. Let me finish. I'm awesome. No one should say, God is tempting me. Yeah, but you were talking to who? To who? To who? Hold on one second. To the people. Let's read it. Let's read what the Bible says, right? For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Who are saying so, that? So, the very fact... That? No, who was saying that? I'm telling you. James. I'm telling you. Okay, look. Was James the brother look, of Jesus? Look, look. James, was Jesus still on earth when he was making that statement? Hold on. No, I'm asking Is you a question. James... I want it to be in order because the claim you're making in this... In the book of James, I'm responding it's to not you. relevant to Christ. In the account that I gave you in the book of Matthew 4, in this account, it is about, actually, is in relation of Adam and Jesus. The temptation that came to Adam he fall into sin is the same lack manner the devil came to tempt Jesus. And Jesus prevailed over that temptation. That's all, all that I'm you're just, I'm not, giving you the not. context. I'm giving the context. You may not like it, but I'm giving the context of why it was that. Because through one man, sin came into the world. But through one man, salvation came. The one true man who came, salvation is Jesus. So what I'm saying, when Jesus' temptation came, Jesus reinforced the commandment of God. He said, it is written, you shall not tempt your Lord, your God. So he was making that statement. He said, I'm your God. You cannot tempt me. No, no, no. That's no, the statement no, no, Jesus no. made. Listen, we, we can no, read no, no, it no, again. No, let me, respond. Let let me again. respond to you. Allow me to respond to you, right? It says, evil cannot, no one can tempt God. You are, right? We are quoting no, no, James no, no, who no, came no, after no, Jesus. Let me finish. Let me finish what I'm saying. Let okay. me finish what Let's I am saying. Then. The Bible clearly says that evil cannot, God, God cannot be tempted by evil. No, you're not being right? logic. No, you're hold on. Let logic. me finish. Let no, me, no, not. allow me to finish and then make your point. Right? What I'm saying to you is that the Bible clearly says that the devil cannot tempt God. Now, irrespective of whether Jesus quoted the Old Testament by saying that God cannot be tempted, I agree with you, but that's not the issue I'm raising here. What's the issue? The issue is exactly. Maybe do you need to understand what I'm saying? I know what you do. You are I, I don't think you do. I do. I do. Let me explain I to fully, you. I let, fully let me explain to you. Implied. Let me explain to you what I think that you're not understanding here. Yes, Jesus quotes the Old Testament by saying, "God cannot be tempted by evil." So he was I agree. About himself. How, no, he wasn't. He was He's saying. About what did he say? I will tell you. I will so tell you. I can let you me tell you. No, no, and let me finish. Let me finish. You're not allowing me to finish. You're just talking over me. We I'm not. Oh, we, what we should do is have it moderated. No, if you want to have it moderated, let's have it moderated. 
Because I think what what we're talking of each other and it's not it's not. No, great. because you're not being fair. Because, okay. Look, look. Wait, No, 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 that's all right. Can you time this? It, it's all right. No, no. Time it's all right. this discussion. Because, no, the reason why it's a conversation. No, okay. Time this discussion. Look, look. Because what would you want talking no, over each other? No, 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 no. So time the discussion. I don't, I don't want time. I'll give you time to make your point. No, no, no. The no, reason no. why. You time the discussion, and then. We have two minutes and he has two minutes or three minutes. I think this is better because that way we can we can have our equal say. Yes, let's time this. Let's time it. I don't think it's gonna help. Time it. I don't think it's gonna help. It will help. I don't think it's gonna help. Three minutes each. That's fair. So then I can say my point, he can say his point. That way we're not talking over each other. It's more respectful that way. I'll I'll, I'll continue. Right. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me stop. Ready? Yeah, okay. Right. The point I was making here, right, is that the Bible clearly says that God cannot be tempted by evil, right? Now, yes, I agree with you that Jesus, he pointed to the Old Testament and said, God cannot be tempted with evil. But Jesus is speaking about the Father. The Father cannot be tempted with evil. If you believe that Jesus is God, we can clearly see that Jesus was tempted. And the reason why I say this is because the devil came to Jesus and said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself off the mountain. Throw yourself off the mountain, right? That is an evil suggestion. Is it not? That's an evil suggestion. If I said to you, go on top of the Eiffel Tower and throw yourself off the building, that's an evil suggestion I'm making to you, right? So same way that Jesus, when the devil came to Jesus and then the devil said, throw yourself off the mountain, that's an evil suggestion. So therefore Jesus was tempted by evil. Now Jesus reminded the devil by saying, you cannot tempt the Lord your God. But my real question here is this, right? Where does Jesus say in that passage that he is God? Because Jesus said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And we, are, we know that we are talking about the Father, because the Father cannot be tempted with evil, as James chapter 1 verse 13 asserts. So I'm asking you, you still have not brought to me an evidence where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. I need to see that verse. If you cannot bring a verse like this, then we can both safely conclude that Jesus is no less than a prophet and a human being, as Acts chapter 2 verse 32 states, right? The other point I wanted to raise, I'm not sure how long I've got. One minute, right. I still want you, you to respond to the points that I raised about Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. I have given you uh, F.C. Conybeare and I've also given you Dr. Giza Vermis. They are of the opinion that Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 is an interpolation. All Christ, most Christian scholars agree unanimously that Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 is an interpolated verse because it contradicts Matthew chapter 15 verse 24. It also contradicts Matthew chapter 10 verse 5. You quoted Isaiah 49 verse 5, which contradicts all of these verses. So again, my question still stands. Show me an evidence where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. I'm looking for something more concise and more profound. Again, I will, I will uh, quickly. Uh, it's all right. I mean, I don't mind. It, it, it's again. I will narrow session. Another narrow session. Yeah. Narrow session. So, all right. Okay. Again, it's still. I think it's a silly. Um, it's a silly argument when the Islamic uh, Dawah claiming Jesus to make a clear statement. I'm God worship me. A human being with a, a common sense cannot ask that question. There's no human being can be um, represented as God. Yeah, like I'm saying today, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm God worship me. Does he make me God? Will he make me God if I make that? There are many people who came to claim they were Jesus, they are followers. People were, were following them. They claimed they were divine. There were many people who came. So if I, I say I'm God worshiping me, does he make me God? And I gave him a quote in the book of Job 9. Jesus proved to be God. How did he prove to be God? He proved to fulfill the prophecies of the Old Testament. Who can walk on water? The miracle of walking on water is a prophecy in the book of Job. Only God can walk on water. The prophecy of coming the sea, the wind, 
it's a prophecy in the Old Testament. Jesus did it um, deliberately just to prove he was that divine God who can perform these things. And there is a, a verse in, in Psalm that I gave him earlier, I read. Jesus opened the house of the blind, a person who was born blind. In, in, in Psalm, he says, only God can do it. In Psalm 48, verse 8. Only God can open the eyes of the blind. So I gave him uh, evidence, uh, substantiate evidence of Jesus trying to prove his divinity. And I gave him Matthew 4. In Matthew 4, the devil did not come to, to address him as a man, just a man, but he came to address him as the divine title of God, of the Son, because we believe Son of God is divine, is God. That's what we believe. As a Christian, that's what we believe. And the Satan, exactly when he came, addressed him with that title. And that title in the book of Daniel, in the book of Daniel, to whom uh, the one who came in a cloud and came to the ancient of days, and to him was given authority and power that all men should serve him. All right? So all this, Jesus was, um, the devil was quoting, the devil was quoting this divine son of God, which is already prophesied in the book of Daniel. So, I mean, I did not have enough time, but I'm just saying, I'll answer first of all, a human being openly can make his claim is God, he's not gonna make him God. He need to prove he's God. Jesus proved it to be God. He resurrected the dead. He opened the eyes. He opened the eyes of the blind. That's the way he proved that it was divine. Time. It was absurd to make okay. that claim and God worship him. Okay. Time? Okay. Right. I asked you specifically, show me one verse in the Bible where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. You have failed, you have failed. Listen, did I, did I interrupt you? Because you're going to the Did I interrupt you? What did I say? Let me finish. What did I say? Let me finish. Respect, no, I want you to respect my time. No, if you keep respect going into the same thing, we're not making Respect my time. I want to respect it. But if respect you're still making time. the same claim, when I answer, you made very much are you happy with my answer? Are you happy with my answer? Uh, can, can I make my time? Yeah, but, but you see, let me want us to make progress. Let me make my time. Because if you keep going on the same thing, let me have my time. Yeah. You said many things that I disagreed with you, but not once did I interrupt you, yeah. right? So show the same. No, I was answering so show you. the same, answering. brother. You are the one Sh attacking me. I'm answering you. I'm answering you. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna come back to the same thing. Right. Let me finish my point. Right. Right. I said to you earlier, show me an evidence where Jesus says, "I am God, worship me." You pointed towards the devil. Right? As if I should take his testimony as truth. Right? Shaitan. I'm gonna to, I'm gonna take Shaitan's testimony as the truth that Jesus is God. This is this is ludicrous. I am asking you, show me where Jesus himself said this. Now I'm gonna show you a verse. I'm gonna show you multiple verses where the Father says that he is God, that you should only worship none but him. Right. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6 follows. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. That, that verse refutes Jesus as being God because it says, besides me, no, excuse me, my time. Excuse me, my time. It says, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. That completely debunks Jesus being God. Point number two. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 35, to you it was shown that you might know that the Lord is God. There is no other besides Him. Refutes Jesus being God. Point number three, Isaiah 43, verse 10. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am He. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. Right? Isaiah 43 verse 10 debunks Jesus being God. Mark chapter 12 verse 30, uh, 29. Jesus answered, The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Right? So I've given you multiple verses from the Old Testament, multiple attestations from the Father Himself saying that there is nothing before me, 
neither there shall be any other God after me. Yet you are still holding on to the principle that Jesus is God. What I've closed, shown you clear evidences to demonstrate that he is not God, right? Last point I want to raise is that you mentioned a verse in the book of Psalms where people will pay reverence to Jesus. Did you know that the disciples, so in the book of Daniel, Daniel received worship. Daniel never objected. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 46, Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and worshipped Daniel. And guess what? Daniel didn't object. He never said, hold on, I'm not God. Why are you worshipping me? So you need to prove to me that Daniel is not God because he received worship and he didn't object. So if your argument is that Jesus received worship and he didn't object and that makes him God, that means by this the default of argument, Daniel is God because he didn't object worship by Nebuchadnezzar. Right, okay. Um, again, we're going, I, I've, I've answered about uh, Jesus making a clear statement that he was God. And I've answered, I say it's a, it's a silly statement and uh, uh, Muslims should not be using that argument against the Christian. Because it's a silly a human being to claim to be God. It's just a statement, it proves nothing. And when I use, um, when I use uh, Matthew 4, I was using uh, this verse to prove two entities. One recognized that this was a divine entity and was quoting, when he was quoting the Son of God, he was quoting the biblical revelation that the Son also is God, is able to perform miracles. That's what he was quoting when he addressed him, first of all, as being the Son of God. And Jesus' name, when he affirmed, you cannot tempt the Lord your God, he was affirming now to be God as the Son of God. Because God is a title. So Jesus was sharing in the same title of God, Godship. So that's why he was representing, and the devil recognized it was divine. And I will give you in terms of you, you, you brought. Do you do that? I am. Um, yeah. Then I, I, and then and you, you brought Abraham. about uh, Isaiah 46, was in it? Isaiah in Isaiah 45, verse 5. Yes, he says, "I'm the Lord, and there is no one other. There is no God beside me." But look what God is said before, prior to this, in verse uh, Isaiah 46, 44, 6. That says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer. So God is not saying it by himself, but he associating himself with his Redeemer. Who is the Redeemer? The Lord and his Redeemer, he says. He says, that says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Beside me he is no God. So when God is saying, he is the Redeemer, I mean, He is the Lord, God of Israel. He is not saying He is by Himself. He is associating His Redeemer. So quote that verse correctly. Exodus 3, John 8. Don't quote it correctly. Exodus now, I'll give you in, 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 in John 17. What does Jesus say? In John 17, Jesus is requiring. Uh, you want me to stop? You need to find the yeah, yes, yes, stop. Look, now what's happening? So is it, is it my turn? Yeah, I'm going to read it. I'm just going to read the verse. Yeah, I'll give you extra 10 seconds. Well. Yeah, let him yeah, read. I'm just going to read. Let him read. Here, in the same Bible, in the book of uh, John 17, Jesus is requiring to God to glorify him. Here, the statement Jesus is making. He used many statements that Jesus did said in the book of John. Jesus was saying, Father, the hour has come, glorify your son. So here again, he's bearing the same title as the devil was addressing him to be the son of God, the divine son of God. Okay, and here, huh? time. I'm just reading the verse. I've given you the chance. Did I not give me the chance? But that you stop me to go and then explain. Right, okay. Okay, I just say, I, I reinforce again the same. All right, you got 10 seconds. The same. Give him 10 I reinforce seconds. the same. Uh, the same uh, context in terms of God and His Son. Father, the hour has come, glorify your Son, that your Son also may glorify you. So, can I just so here yeah, yeah. it's a clear statement. Yeah. Jesus is requiring God to glorify Him. You can make your point after the. 
Right. Time? Okay. Right. No, they don't accept I have still, look, again, I just feel that you are not answering my question. So therefore, I just have to assume that there is no proof, right? So let's go back to the verse of Isaiah chapter 44, because you mentioned the word Redeemer, right? Let's go back to the verse. It says, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer. Show me in Isaiah 44 that the Redeemer is Jesus. I guarantee that you will be able to show me that it's not, that's not the case. I guarantee that you cannot prove to me from Isaiah 44 verse 6 that this Redeemer is Jesus. I challenge you to prove that to me. Right. Number two, it says, The Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no other God. So let's take, okay, let's say for argument's sake that the Redeemer is Jesus, even though there's no proof in Isaiah 44 verse 6. Isaiah 44 verse 6, that there is no proof that the Redeemer is Jesus. But let's buy for argument that... Malak. What's your problem? What's your problem? Okay, you know I can't concentrate. That's why. Okay, sabr, Now, what I'm saying, right, is that. Okay, let's say for argument, say the Redeemer is Jesus, right? It says here, right, that there is no other God besides me. So even if you want to include, even if you want to include the Redeemer in this sentence, right? There is absolutely no evidence to demonstrate that the Redeemer is Jesus. You need to prove that to me, right? Now, one of the biggest sins that you could commit, right, in Islam is shirk, right? Shirk is what? Associates and partners with the Creator. And in the Quran, Allah says, Inna Allah, la Allah does not forgive. And you shirikubi, that you associate partners with me. And that's Allah will forgive any other sin other than that, right? So what you are doing is the greatest treacherous sin by associating partners with God, by worshipping Jesus, by giving the rights of the Creator to His creation, right? Now, last point I want to make is John 17. You mentioned John 17 verse 3, right? And this is life eternal, that they may know you are the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Who does Jesus identify as the only true God in this verse? Now you spoke about glory. Give me the glory that I had with you before the world was. That doesn't prove Jesus is God. In any shape or form, it doesn't prove Jesus is God. Because when we look at glory, what does the word glory mean? Look at the definition of the word glory. Glory doesn't mean worship. Glory does not mean worship whatsoever. So again, I want you to prove to me that the Redeemer is Jesus in Isaiah 44. That's what. That's the challenge I have for you. Time. Let me know once you're ready. Yeah, ready? Hold on, I'm not ready. Yeah. Okay, fine, fine. I'll right, okay. Um, no, 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 I'm not. Okay, just get your coat and then I'll start. Right, I'll start. Okay, first of all, in the book of John, God, Jesus is making a statement. He says, search, search, search the scripture, if for in them you think you have eternal life, and there are that which testify of me. So here Jesus is making the claim, the scriptures, that which is the Torah, the prophet, that they had already in John 5, 39, and uh, 40, yeah, in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, John 5, 39, Jesus is claiming the scriptures that the Jew have is talking about him. So when he said to prove the Redeemer who he is, Jesus is claiming to be that figure that is mentioned in the scripture. And this is the claim from the statement from Jesus himself. Now, I will give you in the book of, uh, of, of John, uh, in the book of uh, of Psalm 2, again, I'm going to go back there because it looks like when he's calling about Shrek, Shrek, exactly, that's what I think. We don't worship the same God. Your God does not associate himself with anyone. But here there's a clear statement, God associating himself with his Redeemer. You cannot have this statement in a Quran, impossible. Now in, in, in Psalm 2, let's read in verse 10. 
What does God say? Here he's calling all people to honor Christ, his son, the same son as the devil mentioned, as Jesus claimed to be that divine son. Here in book of uh, Psalm 2, verse 10, what does it say? Now therefore, be wise, O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. He's warning the world to honor the son unless he can be angry kiss the sun lest he be angry and you perish in your way he says don't kindle his anger if he is angry you will perish when his right is kindled by a little blessed are all those who put their trust in him he's not saying just put trust in me but those who put trust in him god is enforcing that he's saying to honor him he's calling all the kings of the earth so those who rule the human race and all the subject, and God is making this clear. You cannot have this statement in the Quran, that's so right, it's a shirk, because your God is by himself. Your God is the master, and all subjects are, are slaves. That's what I'm saying, our God, I gave you 44, um, Isaiah 40, uh, 44, verse 6, he claimed him, the God of us, and his Redeemer, and I gave you... Uh, uh, Psalm 2 verse 3 when he says him and his anointed are one and people try to separate them. So here I'm showing you that there is a unity from the Old Testament, not from the New Testament. And Jesus claimed to be the one he's referring in all the scriptures that they were searching. Okay. Time, time. Right. So again, I think you failed to answer any of my questions. I asked you, I asked you specifically, where does Jesus say that I am God worship me? You have shown, you have not given me any evidence. So now let's analyze the verses that you've raised, right? You said that in Psalms, the father and the son, they share the same unity, right? This is what you mentioned just now, right now. But did you know that the father, that the son, the father and the disciples also were one in this unity? In John, John chapter 17, verse 21, right? Actually, let's get the verse up. In John chapter 17, verse 21. Uh, yeah, pause, pause the time. If you can. That will be eating into my time. John 17, verse 21. Right. It says here, now you need to be consistent. If you're saying that the book of Psalms proves that Jesus and God are one unity and Jesus is God, then you need to also, you have a problem with this verse then. John chapter 17 verse 20 says, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. All of them, including the disciples, yes. right? Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be one in us, right? So here we can demonstrate that in your, according to your logic, the disciples are God. If you really want to put it as your own interpretation, that because you pointed toward the book of Psalms, that the Father and the Son, they share the same unison, so therefore the Father, the, the, the Son and the Father are God because they share the same unity, then you need to also be consistent in your interpretation that the disciples of Jesus are also God, as it clearly says in John 17 verse 21, that they're all one in us. That's point number one. Point number two, if we go back to Isaiah chapter 44, you still need to show me where the Redeemer is Jesus. I ask you, Prove to me from Isaiah 44 that the Redeemer is Jesus. You went to Psalms and even what you read in Psalms doesn't prove that Jesus is that Redeemer. All you have said is that they just share the same unity. So again, prove to me that Jesus is the Redeemer from Isaiah 44 or prove to me from Mark, Matthew, Luke and John that the, the Redeemer is Jesus according to his own words. Time? Uh, 30 seconds. Right. Since I've got 30 seconds left, I quoted you John 17 verse 3 where Jesus says that this is life eternal, that they may know you are the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. 
Jesus identified the Father as the only true God. So that clearly debunks all of your evidences to demonstrate that Jesus is God. Right, I'm a bit slow. No, don't, don't. Right, okay, yeah. Again, uh, I think uh, in terms of ownership of the word, I gave him the verse earlier. You can go back then and listen to him. Jesus is claiming ownership of all the scriptures. This is in book of John 5. Jesus is claiming the ownership of what is written in the scripture. And it's clear, he's speaking to the Israelites that understood what he was saying, what he was doing. All right? Which verse? It was the John 5, I think. Uh, it was John 5. Uh, yeah, stop. Let me uh, stop. Yeah, stop his time. Stop yeah, his time. Please. Um, I just came out. No, no, John, no, just uh, John 5, I think 49. Uh, okay. uh, But it's, uh, it's John 5, 38. But you do not have his word abiding in you. Because whom he sent, you do not believe. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life, that you may have life. So Jesus is claiming they were, they were rejecting him and they were clinging in the writing of the prophet and um, of the prophet. But Jesus is affirming the scripture that you're searching, this same scripture, they talked about me. You don't want to come to me so you may have eternal life. So here Jesus is owning all the scriptures. Now, there, there were other points that you made about... Uh, 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 to prove that Jesus was uh, divine, I think. I don't know. Can you remind me, please? I just want to be able to uh, be consistent. No, I said, show me from the Isaiah 44 where the Redeemer, it, it claims that the Redeemer is That's Jesus. That's what I answered. That's what I gave you, John 5, 39, uh, 39 where Jesus is claiming all the scriptures. 5, 39? Yeah. I just read it. John so, 5, 39. The scriptures diligently because you think that in them... You have eternal life. This. Yeah. yeah let him. Yeah. Let, you can stop. Let him read. Okay. No. No. Continue. Continue. I don't want to cut no, your no. time. No. No. Did you get that? Did you, you, uh, you bring up the verse and then he will respond. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wanted to get. I mean. No. 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 It's no, fine. You see. Look. No. Just hold it. See. We are not here to go back and forth, back and forth. I make a point. If he will agree with that point, he doesn't agree, we move on. That's what I want That's to fine. Continue. So in this question... Don't need to show. Please. Sorry. No, no, no. He's yeah. okay. He's okay. Not, I'm not okay. doing it. Uh, just no, we're having a time debate. We're having a time debate. Yeah, exactly just, like no, no. It just, uh, it's not the first time. I feel like uh, I've not been heard. So it's not just like... Okay, that's, why, that's why I wanted it. That's why I asked for time. So go ahead. So basically... So No, no. He can go. He can go. Okay. Let look. Okay. Look. Let's stop now, yeah? Let me answer question one by one. If we, you don't have to agree, but I want just to be able to answer that question. If you don't agree, then we move on to something else. I think that make more logic because you are saying the same thing, and then you come back, uh, you say, say the same thing, we're not moving. You right. can have my answer. If you don't agree with them, then we can move on to something else. No, I am, I mean, that's what exactly yeah. I'm gonna so do. So that's the first question. No, no, still time it though. Yeah, that, that's the first question you asked to prove from Isaiah 40, 44, 6, for one minute. That to prove that Jesus is the Redeemer. And then I brought the verse John 5 from verse 38 to 39. Yeah. yeah. You can look it up now. So we can just, I just like read it. Nor does his word it, dwell in you, for you do not believe that the one he sent you study the scriptures diligently. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I want okay. you to continue so, so I'll I respond. Answer that question. Okay, with fine. This verse, fine. Okay? Fine, no problem. Yeah. But I'll respond to that, but fine. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you the verse. Right. No problem. And then I want you to remind me which other point that you made. Which other point you made? Uh I meant 
No, I want to go point by point because we're just going to be here going back and forth. It's the same but thing. I, 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 I don't listen. like it. I don't like it. Okay. I want ask that. Uh, okay. You asked me a question. Uh, I'll ask you a question. You answer me. Okay. Directly. I, I, That's it. I'll remind one, you. One remind by you. question. Let me remind you. One by one. Yeah, one by one. I re okay. Can I, should I respond to you? Yeah. Okay. Rahan, time this, right? Okay. So, you pointed to John chapter 5, verse 38 and 39, right? That's not proof that Jesus is the Redeemer. It doesn't say anything about him being a Redeemer. Let's read it. It says, Nor does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one who sent, the one he sent. You study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me. Yet you refuse to come to have eternal life. Sorry, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Clearly what he's saying here is that the scriptures spoke about Jesus. It doesn't say that he's a redeemer. In fact, it doesn't even use that word at all. You just made that up. It says that the scriptures talk about me, but you read the scriptures diligently, but yet you do not pay attention to my words because in me is life. I agree with that statement 100% because I believe that Jesus is the messenger of God. So I believe in the messenger of God, there is life. There is life. So can we however, try, however, yeah. however, so one point, I yeah. pointed towards Isaiah 44, verse 9. Show me in Isaiah 44 where Jesus is associated with Redeemer. You have failed to give me the response from Isaiah. You pointed towards John chapter 5, and John chapter 5 doesn't even say any of the above. Hold on, let me finish the point because my time is still going. No, I don't want it. Just the, the, stop the, two, the two more points. No, 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 no. I want it. No, you can't. No, 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 no. Yeah, I know. No, he's moderate. Let me finish my point. It's not going to work. I want us to address one point at a time. Seriously, it's it's important. It's important that we have discussed. You know what? Because it's going to go all over. If it's not time, it's going to go all over the place. I know this. No, it's not. It's not. So I'm not going to raise many points. But he's not. I want to address one point at a time because then we're not going to make progress. That's what I'm saying. Do you, know, do you know why I want, do you know why I prefer it timed? Because it gives both speakers the time to air their point and then I respond and you respond to me. See, if we don't have this time, what's going to happen, which happened earlier, is that we're going to start talking over each other. So I don't want that. I'm trying to cut that off so we both can be heard. So I'm sorry I refuse to continue this conversation without it being timed. Okay, good. Right? So, Rehan. Stop. Yeah, no, I have to because okay. I know this. It, that's the only way we're both going to be heard here. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, if Jesus is God, right, and I will prove to you that he's not God from his own words, right? Two points here. Number one, Jesus did not know the day of judgment, right? Jesus said, of that day, of that hour, the Son does not know. The angels in heaven don't know, but the Father only knows the hour. So now my question to you is this, if Jesus is God, why does he not know the day of judgment? And number two, if Jesus is God, Jesus said in the book of Matthew that Zachariah was killed by the, uh, Zachariah, the son of Barakiah, was killed by the Jews near the altar. But if you go back to 2 Chronicles chapter 23, it says that it was Zachariah, the son of Jehudiah, who was killed. Why did Jesus get the two Zacharias mixed up if he is God? If Jesus is God, he would know which Zachariah was killed. But yet we see a clear contradiction here. So number one, where did Jesus say he was God? Because I quoted of that day, of the hour, knows no man, not even the son, but the father knows. So why did Jesus not know that information if he is God? And why did Jesus get the two Zacharias mixed up? Over to you. No, you have to stop. No, it's fine. Stop the time. Okay. Give, give it to him. Are you to find references that Yeah, I'm just trying to find a reference. I'm just trying to find a point that I can So you got one minute So, um, right again, I will um, answer him to the same point about, uh, can I ask you a question within my time? Of course. So when, what do you think Jesus is implying when he says the scriptures talk about him? What is he implying? Very easy. That the scriptures... No, no, 
I'm here the question. Would you like me to respond? Yeah. He is this saying is, this is the, the this is the very reason why. No, I'm, I'm using my time to ask him a question. But I'm the moderator. You can't just dictate. He's not dictating. No, he's not. No, I'm asking. You see, I want to move I, I, one I, I, point at a time because. When we're going into many points, I don't think we're advancing the conversation. Okay, so maybe we, should just, maybe we should just stop the conversation. No, no, I want to address one point. Because now, when you bring in too many points, I may not be fast as you are, you want to take me in that journey. But I want to address one point at a time. So that's what I'm asking. These people only have the scriptures in their time. So can I establish? What are you two talking about? I've listened, but what are you two focusing on at this moment? At the moment, what I'm focusing is on him denying Christ being identified as the Redeemer. Okay, so what other points is he raising? He raised another point, but I'm not but done you, with this point but, yet. But you must have raised those points in order for him to respond. Yeah, but no. So you've got to give him the time and the courtesy. No, yeah, of course, of course. Of course I did. Not allow you. No, I did. This is my time, mind you. No, 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 hang, hang on. You're the one that dictated. You're no, the I'm not dictating. The, you're the one that violated the... Look, look, look. The reason why I'm saying that, because I gave him, I answered this question many times, and he's still coming back to me, saying I haven't still proved that Jesus is the Redeemer of Isaiah 44. Now, that's what I'm trying to do. Like, can I ask you a no, direct no, no, question? No, hang on, but you are... No, no, hang on, hang on. But you must have raised other points no, in order for him to respond. No, I haven't. You have? I haven't. You, you spoke about the prophecy, then you spoke about Jesus. Because I was answering him. So it's the other way around. Yeah, I'm, I'm the one being accused. I'm answering him. Okay, so who's the claim and who's the defendant? He's the claim. Yeah, so you're the claiming, not the defendant. I'm in the defendant. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. That's what it is. Sorry, I'm, I'm making the assertion that there is, there, there is no proof for Jesus being God. Exactly. I have, I have. Okay, okay, so, so okay, okay. Now, now I understand. So now you have to be given the time to respond. I get it. So what you want going forward, you want each point to be raised. Yeah. Then and finish, finish and walk away. If they're going to be at a point, okay, then you need structure. Then you need structure. So yeah. So that's what I. You so talk. Yeah. So at the moment, I think uh, he claimed because he made the claim from his belief which is the Quran that there is no shirk. So associating Allah with uh, Jesus is a shirk. And that's what I say, of course, we don't believe the same God. Because your God, he does not make those statements. That's later on. He said right from the beginning, prove to me where Jesus says, I'm going to worship you, correct? Yes. That was yeah. the initial point. Yeah. Now, yeah. I, I heard him respond. Yeah, yeah, I did. Well, just because somebody says, I am God, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are God. Exactly. OK. Now, what I'm trying to say is this. Let's stick to that point, and then we'll move on. Yeah, exactly. That's okay, what fine. I want. OK, fine. So, so he, just, may, just, he may he may not it, agree with it, me. It, That's fine. Right. So but then we have deal with it. We don't so come back to it. it. Now, now, now so we don't come back to it. So what I'm saying is that this is the reason why I wanted it timed. Because I want him to air his, what he needed to say, and then I'll respond and vice versa. This is what, this is what that's what I responded many times. It seems I'm not getting anywhere, so we keep then, going then, back then, on Okay, then, then we just, then but maybe we I want, if we address that point, then that's done. You may not agree with it, but that's fine. But I gave okay. you the point. All right, so, let, so then, okay, so fine. I disagree with your evidences, you disagree with mine. So based on your that, claim, your claim. so based on that, maybe we should just end it. Yeah, but that's what I said. So your claim that, uh, uh, because you use the same verse to claim that God is one and there's no one beside him. And I gave you the same yeah, verse in the same Isaiah. And I say, he Isaiah is saying that he and his redeemer. Let's, let's end the discussion. And you understand? Alpha and I hear what you're one. saying, but let's end so the discussion. So I've answered that. And the, 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 the way I conclude in the answer of that is John 5 from 30, 38 to 39. Jesus claiming that all the scriptures talk about him. Okay. So that's the no so problem. That answer, okay? okay. So all let's right. move on to another point. So listen, I think it's best to end the discussion because okay, if, if it's not because it. I don't feel that you've answered the questions that I have okay, raised. That's fine. So in that case, let's just let's, okay, that's fine. let's just agree to disagree. Yeah, that's all. Okay. So, otherwise we're not gonna get anywhere. So that's, that's fine, okay. that's fine. Well, I love Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Had a discussion with, what's your name? What's your name? Mike. Michael. Had a discussion with Michael. We have to agree to disagree. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him. I don't think he responded to any of the points I raised, but maybe next time, inshallah, that opportunity will come its way. May Allah guide him. Ameen.